In this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between hyperparathyroidism and hypoparathyroidism. So let's get started. This here is a thyroid gland. It's a view of the larynx. This is an anterior view, so looking at the front. And once you turn it around, this here is the posterior view. You can see the thyroid gland makes like a C shape around, but it doesn't close here in the end. And right here in the back, you will see that there are four parathyroid glands. On the right, a superior and inferior, and on the left, a superior and inferior as well, too. So this is how I start thinking about calcium regulation. First, I draw a dog bone, just representing a regular human bone. Then, I like to draw a blood vessel. So here we would say blood. Sometimes you might see it labeled as extracellular fluid. And then I like to draw a kidney as well too. Sometimes I draw the intestine in, but that's only when we deal with other hormones. So first, let's talk about the bone. Okay, there is an arrow I draw going this way and an arrow I draw going this way. There are certain bone cells that lie on top of the bone. There's one cell here, and this cell actually has many, many nuclei. It's a fused monocyte. Actually, it's about five or six monocytes that fuse together to make one large cell that eats away and wears away at the bone and just starts to take a piece out of it. Now, this process over here is called resorption. And you can think of it like reabsorption too, but just usually called resorption. So what's going? All this bone right here, all this pretty much calcium, Ca2+, plus, is going and it's going to get dumped into here. So what is this going to do to blood calcium levels? This is going to increase blood calcium concentration. These two brackets here mean concentration. And there's another hormone here that's going to take the calcium from the blood and deposit it on top of the bone, thereby making it stronger. But what is it doing? It's lowering the concentration of calcium in the blood. What is that cell that's going to be laying the bone there on top? Well, let's discuss those names and how I remember them. Okay, we have two bone cells. If they're bone cells, they both start with the word osteo, because osteo meaning bone. But the question is, which one of these is the class and which one of these is the blast? So we have two letters, right? A B for the blast and we have a C for the class. So when I take the C, as I think of crush. So where are we crushing the bone? Well, we're not really crushing it, we're resorbing it due to the mineralization of acidic enzymes. So this here will be our osteoclast, which would make this here osteoblast, but I just take the B and I remember build. So we are building bone. And why is the osteoclast larger than an osteoblast? Is because it's about five cells fused together versus this, it's just one cell. Okay, so which one is parathyroid hormone and which one is going to be calcitonin? Well, calcitonin is going to be coming from the thyroid gland itself. So what I do with calcitonin, right, I say calcitonin, right, tone, tone down blood calcium. So calcitonin is going to tone down blood calcium. I said this in another video, you don't tell somebody tone up the TV, you know, you usually tell them be quiet, so you want to tone down the TV. So tone down blood calcium. Where do we see blood calcium getting toned down? Right here. So that makes this hormone over here calcitonin, which means this one here is going to be parathyroid hormone, PTH. So let's focus on the action of PTH right now because that's the purpose of this video. Alright, so I paused the video to move the kidney over so we have a little bit more room. So just let me add a little bit right here. Got the pelvis and the ureter coming out of the kidney. And I want you to keep in mind something before we continue. The function of parathyroid hormone, what is it doing to blood calcium level? It's increasing it. Why am I saying that? Because now that we're going to talk about the kidney, I want you to think, are we going to urinate and excrete more calcium or are we going to reabsorb more of it back into the blood? Well, the function of parathyroid is to increase it. 
So uh, naturally, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to reabsorb that calcium. So parathyroid hormone is going to help to reabsorb it. So again, we're still increasing the calcium levels in the blood. Now, the next part is a little bit tricky, and I don't know if you need to know it, but I'll explain it. All right, so bone is not just calcium. Bone is also phosphate as well, too, PO4, 3, minus. And if I just draw out another blood vessel down here, inside the blood, you'll have uh, calcium floating around. There's some calcium is just floating around by itself. That's what we call the act of calcium that's taking effect. And that is our ionized calcium. And it's about 50% of the calcium that's in the blood. Now, then there is some calcium, and it is bound to phosphate. And we call this here complex calcium. And that's about 10% of the calcium floating in the blood. And it's not active. The other 40% of calcium is protein bound. Now, let's stick to parathyroid here. So if calcium is here in the blood and it's attached to phosphate, it's not going to have an effect on the body. What we need to do is we need to break that bond so that it can go here and be active and take its effect on the body. So basically, as the phosphate concentration increases, you're going to have more and more complex uh, calcium and phosphate. So again, so what's the goal here? We want to increase this ionized calcium in the blood. So we don't want that phosphate in there. So basically, are we going to want to reabsorb more? No, we're going to want to excrete more of that phosphate in the urine and eliminate it from the body. So thereby, PTH is increasing the blood calcium, but it is decreasing the concentration of phosphate. All right, so I removed everything else. You kind of want to keep this diagram with you on the test. It's not that bad, a bone, blood, and kidney, and then just draw a couple arrows and label it. It will help you throughout your questions. Okay, so hyperparathyroid, what's going on here? Well, the first thing that you see going on here is what are we doing to the bone? Do you think the bone is going to get stronger or is the bone going to get weaker? Well, the osteoclasts are working on it. They are, in a sense, crushing it. So we're going to lose pieces of the bone. So you're basically going to have what we'll say as brittle or, you know, just weak bones. So the bones aren't going to be strong. So you can imagine somebody's going to come to you. Maybe they're breaking their bones easier. You get the point. What about, what's the second thing that's going to be happening over here? Do you think this person is going to have hyper or hypophosphatemia? Well, they're excreting it a lot. So they are going to have hypophosphatemia. You can look up the spelling on that one. I don't feel like doing it here. What's another thing that we can't directly see here? Well, number three, they're going to end up with muscle fatigue. So how do you kind of illustrate this? Okay, well, if you take your plasma membrane, right, you got a phospholipid bilayer. There are your phosphate heads here and here. There's the tails coming uh, off of it. This would be the inside of the cell. This would be the outside. What's normally the charge on the inside, negative or positive? Well, the charge is normally negative on the inside, and on the outside, it's going to be normally positive. Okay, so with hyperparathyroid, what's happening to the blood calcium? It's increasing. So you're going to have a lot more positive here on the outside because, look, this represents extra, meaning outside, cellular fluid. So if you notice, you're creating an even larger difference in potential here. So it's going to be harder to reach an action potential. What does that look like? Let's say, you know, the membrane's over here somewhere on the inside and it's somewhere negative. And let's say the positive used to be here. But now you've got so much more calcium, you've raised it now up to here. So now you have an even bigger gap right here than you did before. So it's harder pretty much to get this action potential to go, pretty much just to reach that threshold to generate the action potential. So basically it's going to be harder to contract uh, the muscles, so you're going to have, I guess, what we'd say is muscle fatigue. What's an even fourth thing that can happen over here? Well, you have high calcium that's going to be in that blood. So if you have a lot of calcium, 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 all that calcium is going to combine, and what are we creating right here? We are creating calcium, or you could just say kidney stones, but they're made out of calcium. So if somebody's going to come in, they're going to say uh, maybe painful urination, they got pain over their back or right around the kidney, possibly 
hyperparathyroidism. And I'm sorry, I should have written this first. I guess it should have been obvious, but we're going to have hypercalcemia. Right? Because everything is shuttling all that calcium into the blood, so we're going to have a lot of calcium. So hypercalcemia, but hypo, because we don't want it to be complex with the phosphate. We want it free and active by itself in the blood. Okay, so let's discuss hypoparathyroidism. Hypoparathyroidism now is going to be the opposite. So instead of high calcium levels, it's going to cause low calcium levels, so hypocalcemia. And then over here, instead of doing this, this is not going to happen. So we're going to instead end up with high levels of phosphate in the blood. So what does this uh, low calcium, this hypocalcemia cause? Well, one thing it's going to cause is easy to excite uh, muscles. So muscle excitability. So that is going to increase. Remember before is muscle fatigue. Why again? Well, let's just draw out our plasma membrane. We have our phospholipid heads here and then we have the tails coming off of them. The inside over here is negative. The outside would be positive. And then let's just draw out that chart again, right? Here, let's call this our zero line. Let's say uh, we're right here at some sort of negative charge. And then up here, this is the positive area. So let's say uh, we were like right here now. So what's going to happen is calcium is going to decrease. And where is this calcium, remember? Extracellular. So we're going to get rid of some of these positive charges. So we're not as positive anymore. We actually go down now, so we're actually here. So before, we had a large difference. Now, we have a smaller difference. So it's much easier now to reach that threshold and generate that action potential. So in other words, you can increase or it's easier to uh, excite the muscles. So what are two interesting signs that are under here? Well, the first uh, most important one. Yeah, I had to uh, copy and paste this one. All right, you ready to laugh? It's called the sign of trousseau. I'm not great with French, but trousseau sign. Another name for it is Mande Coucher. Did I pronounce that right? Anyways, what it means is the hand of the obstetrician. All right, because if you take a look at it, and you can see I just pasted the picture in there, this looks like a hand of an obstetrician because this is how their hand usually is when uh, they're delivering a baby just in this position. So what's going on? All right, you put the blood pressure cuff on the patient and uh, you start to inflate it. You get above systolic. So right, the blood's here, uh, the arteries in there, the brachial artery, here comes the blood. It's going uh, down to the arm. And what's the main idea here is calcium is supposed to get through, but you're inflating the cuff so the calcium is stuck up here and there's very little getting here. So just like you saw uh, with our membrane diagram, if you have here negative and here positive, you're if you were originally up here, right, this was the inside of the membrane, if you were originally up here, you're getting less and less positive, you're getting less and less calcium, so it's going to bring it down, so again, it's going to make it easily to be excited to generate that action potential, to hit the threshold to generate it. Okay, so pretty much exact same idea, but in another place of the body, you could test it. This one is Chivostic's sign. Now, this guy's not French. He is Czecho-Australian. So I'm guessing that's probably his Czech side right there. Uh, anyways, what's that is, all right, here's a face of somebody, eyes, nose, mouth, right? But what happens with this person is if you just, like, tap their face, and I encourage you to watch uh, YouTube videos of this, actually, not just get out of here, but as soon as you tap on their face, their uh, mouth just twitches just a little bit and just like right around their nose it just twitches so just tap and twitch tap and twitch because again what's the idea is the muscle can be very easily excited so again I encourage you just put these names in YouTube and you can watch it a few seconds and you'll get the idea down how do I remember Trousseau's sign is I just look at this hand and I just picture this guy has a sewing uh, needle in there, right? And then there's a string and all that. So it's like to sew, true sew, he's sewing, so the hand is like that. 
And I don't know if this worked, but Shavas tag, this kind of looks like tick, you know, like pretend you're just ticking on somebody right there. It kind of looks like a clock. The clock's ticking their face. So you just go tick, tick, and they just keep twitching, twitching. I don't know. Use whatever you want. So one more word to remember here, and that is tetany. Tetany means the muscle is consistently contracted. Like you see all these muscles contracted. This is probably uh, due to clostridium uh, tetani, which means you should take your boosters and your vaccine so this doesn't happen to you. But just look at the hands right here. You can see they're clenched right here. This is a state of tetany, which is, yes, pretty much same exact word here, tetanus. All right, let's do some questions. All right, question number one. A 35-year-old woman presents with acute right flank pain. So it's acute. It hasn't been around for a while. Right flank pain, well, if we take a look at the body right here and we say that's the abdomen, the legs going this way, all right, it's going to be right over here. What's right over here? Well, that's going to be the kidney, right? Okay, 72 hours. That's three days. Uh, temperature seems about normal, blood pressure, uh, a little bit pre-hypertension, pulse seems about normal, and stones, alright, stones, what's going on, what are you thinking, stones are made out of what element, they're probably going to be made out of calcium here, alright, so they're blocking, this patient's condition is associated with which of the following endocrine disorders, I got rid of the multiple choice, and uh, just because to focus on the parathyroid right now, is it going to be hyper or hypo? Again, what do I recommend? Draw out the bone, draw out the blood, draw your arrows one way and the other way. All right, then write calcitonin. Tonin tones down blood calcium. So if we're toning it down, that means we're taking it and we're putting it somewhere. So this must be calcitonin. So it's not this because, again, tone down means remove, and then we got to put it somewhere, so we'll be putting it on here. So this must be here, the parathyroid hormone. If we have parathyroid hormone, we're going to increase the calcium levels. If we have a lot of calcium in here, we're going to create stones. So this is going to be hyperparathyroidism. Let's take a look at the next question. Oh, one more thing, just for fun. What cell is going to be stimulated here? Blast or clast? All right, it's removing it, right? So we're taking it out and we're dumping it in here. So it's going to be the clast. A little extra side note, parathyroid hormone indirectly acts on the clast. It actually acts on the blast and then sends some chemical signals to the clast to take action. But I doubt you're going to be tested on that. So let's move on. All right. Question number two, a patient with a parathyroid deficiency, okay, deficiency, so now we're thinking high what, high po, deficient, uh, alright, so alright, that's basically what we need here, is this hypoparathyroidism. So again, draw your bone here, draw the blood, draw your arrows, parathyroid hormone would be going to the left right here. So just imagine it's not working, right? So this is working. So we're moving the calcium, we're going this way. So we're gonna have low calcium in the blood. What else? We know that calcium and phosphate work the opposite directions. So then we're gonna have high phosphate. So let's go with what we have so far. Low plasma phosphate, nope, that question's out. Low plasma phosphate, nope that question's out, excuse me, that choice is out. Low plasma calcium, yep. Increased muscular excitability, let's come back to that in a moment. High plasma phosphate, yep. And calcium, no, that's done. Increased muscular excitability, we'll talk about it. High plasma calcium, no. So look, without even talking about the excitability of muscle, you're able to bring it down to choice C. But remember, with our uh, membrane, if we draw the zero here, the negative here, and the positive, right? This represents in, this represents the outside. If we have low calcium, because here's our bilayer, that means we're going to have less positives here. So it's, it used to be here, but now it's up here, the outside. So is it easier or harder to reach the threshold? It's going to be easier. So we're going to be able to excite the muscles better. And we have trousseau sign. Again, what was trousseau sign? That's the hand where it bends over. That's my diagram of a hand. And we had the blood pressure cuff that we inflated above systolic 
which limits the calcium getting down to the end of the hand. What's the other sign where we're hitting the face? That would be the chivostic sign where you tap the face and the facial nerve gets excited and the muscles twitch around the mouth and the nose. Thank you. I hope that's helpful. If you have any more questions, you can email me or get at me through the website. I'll have questions or also I just got a Twitter account so you can follow me through that. All right. Take care.